Hey, Brandon. How hey, you Pete. doing? Good. How are nice you? Nice to see you, man. What are we doing? Well, we're rolling out our warm zone heating element here underneath your paver walkway. Okay, good. Now, this system is the same as we're going to use on the step and stoop? Exactly the same system. Okay, but they're two separate they're circuits? They're two separate cables, yeah, but they're tied into the same system, so they'll all turn on and off together. Oh, man, there's got to be some cost savings in that. Absolutely. Most people get scared when they hear electric heating because they think it's going to run their bill up. Okay. That, but this won't run their bill up at all because of our automatic snow switch. It turns on when it's snowing, so it limits your operation cost to only that snow event. If it snows for an hour, you only pay for an hour. If it snows for two, you just pay for two. Okay. So we don't have that idle cost. Okay. Now we're we're in the Midwest in the snow belt. Can the homeowners manually override that? Absolutely. If they want? Every system always comes with a manual override that they can set to however much time they want or just turn the system off if they're not going to be around. Okay. And now let me ask this question. Uh, when you put this on, you can put it on to dry, is that correct? Yes, most of the time the snow will hit and actually evaporate so we don't get accumulation. Okay. So you don't have massive runoff. Oh, uh, and then ice build up. Exactly. Right? So, so there's no we shoveling. We want to avoid that. Yep. Right, okay, great. And now what do we do, just roll this We're out? We're just gonna roll all this, all this all the way out. Now let me ask you one more question. Yeah. Are we gonna bind this to this bedding layer? We are, we're gonna take an actuator, and put a nail with a good size washer to hold it in place. But we're only holding it in place until we put that other half inch of sand and tamp that down. And that's what actually holds it in so place. So it's just temporary? It's just a temporary. Okay, yeah. yeah, let's get it in. All right. So Brandon, this is our sensor that's gonna be mounted up on the roof? Yeah, it's gonna be mounted right at about 10 inches above the roof. Okay. And it's gonna pick up the snow conditions and turn on only when it's snowing. So that's gonna give us the savings that you were talking about. Absolutely. So for a, for a walkway and a stoop like you have here, All right. you're gonna pay 80 cents an hour because of this device. Okay. The average snow time here. Now, in, wait a minute, 80 cents per the, hour to heat the entire higher. step, stoop, and walkway. Yeah, and it's based off of this device. Okay. It's only gonna turn on when it's snowing. All right. The average snow event here in this area lasts three to four hours, so you're going to pay three to four dollars per storm, and that's it. Four dollars a storm. Yep. As long as I have this. As operation. long as you have this on it. Okay. Yeah. Now, what about the maintenance on this? There is no maintenance as long okay. as it's installed by a licensed electrician. All the hookups done correctly, you'll never have to touch it again. Okay. Now, if I wanted to override this, the, we talked about a manual override. Do I have to go up on the ladder and? You could if you want to with this little switch on the side, but we have an auxiliary unit that will sit inside your house, maybe by your garage door opener or okay. right inside somewhere that gives you that option to manually turn it on, off, or on standby mode to say if you go out of town. Okay, so if I'm on vacation, I go can on, turn it off. Turn it off. Oh, more right. Okay, good. All right, that's great. Thank okay. you. Hey, Hank, how you doing? Hey, Pete, good. I got your sensor here. All right. Okay, and you're going to mount that up on that. What is that? That's our galvanized steel frame that we constructed so that we can get the sensor above the roof line where it needs to be. Okay, and that's going to give some integrity to this conduit? That's going to give sturdiness to this conduit and mount the uh, sensor securely. Okay, and I like the way you hid that behind this tree here. And that's going to protect it from the environment as well? Yeah, that was all intentional. It's weatherproof conduit, weatherproof boxes. We've got it nicely hidden behind the gutter so that it's aesthetically pleasing from the street. Thanks, Hank. So Hank, this is the, the breaker panel for the entire home, right? Correct. And this cable here, this big black cable, that's? This cable, this is our power circuit for the warm zone. Okay, and that comes from the junction box that's just outside there and eventually going up to the roof. Correct. Okay, and what is this you have in your hand? Okay, this is our circuit breaker that's gonna power the circuit. Okay. It goes right in the main breaker panel. Okay, and what makes this different than, I don't know, any one of these circuits? Okay, we are required to have GFEP. Ground right. fault equipment protection. Okay. We're going to achieve that with this circuit breaker. Okay. And how is that different from many and one of these others? This is different from your standard GFCI, okay. which operates at 5 milliamps. Okay. This is 30 milliamps, so we don't have nuisance stripping. Okay. All right. And what if you're running a bigger system like a driveway? I mean, we're running a little walkway step and stoop. We have, yeah, we have a smaller application here, so we're just going to use this breaker. But for larger applications, you can actually get a contractor a uh, contactor panel okay. from Warm Zone that has GFEP equipment with it. All right, so to power that driveway. Right. So all we have to do is wire this up and we're ready to go? Correct. Thank you very much, Hank. Thank you.